Yes, my uh, wallet is very important. Uh, my uh, account number is 464. Four Hello everybody, I am really, really excited today. I'm so sorry, I'm so excited. I have never ever made English muffins before and you would think to yourself, Barry, yes, as an English person, you should be born on your birth certificate. There should be a recipe for English muffins, but no. In fact, English muffin is actually quite a nice sort of polite insult, isn't it? I've got to be honest with you, the most times I've had English muffins, being English, is when I have an egg McMuffin. And yes, if you have not seen the video already, I have done a giant egg McMuffin with Jimmy D. James. It was epic, uh, but today we're just going to make the actual muffin. I've always thought, how do you make them? And it's actually pretty simple. Now, obviously, with it being dough based, it's going to take a little bit of time of proving, but we'll come on to that in just a bit. The ingredients I've already got laid out, just apart from <laughs> my wallet. Yes, my uh, wallet is very important. Uh, my uh, account number is 464. All right, so the yeast we can do is crack on with this recipe. We've got some bread flour down there, a little bit stronger than plain flour, plus our wet ingredients too. And hopefully by the end of this video, I'm gonna make my own homemade egg McMuffin completely fresh from scratch as a bonus scene. Ooh. Now over the years, you guys have sort of told me, Barry, don't put the salt and the yeast in together. In fact, I don't know. Yep, <coughs> that's the salt. All right, I'm putting the salt, uh, in with the flour. Uh, a lot of you said that it sort of kills the yeast, although a lot of um, well-known chefs tend to put the yeast in the other half of the bowl and then mix it together and say it's fine. But I'm trusting you guys, all right? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here is our wet station. Well, sort of, some of it's dry as well. We've got ourselves an egg. Add it in with the milk. Putting some butter in with it as well. Some sugar. And here is some fast action yeast. This stuff is very, very hard to get hold of at the moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the microwave because the residual heat from the milk will melt the butter and start to get the yeast working. So I'm gonna do it for about a minute in two 30 second blasts. I'll stir it after 30 seconds. Okay, so we mix that together until we've got all the lumps out of the butter, the eggs all mingled through, and the warm milk is already getting that yeast going. So we're gonna leave this to stand for about 10 minutes. Okie doke, so we're now gonna pour that wet yeasty mixture in with the flour. And just let it sort of mingle and merge around like so. Now I was reading somewhere last night, this is how my life is right now. I was Googling about flour and yeast and stuff, and then I actually tweeted this. Like <laughs> 10 minutes later I was, watching the original Ninja Turtles trailer. Isn't that funny how the internet just takes you random places? In fact, that might be how you're watching this video. But now, we need a floured board because we are going to need to knead. And we're gonna just start to bring it all in. First of all, just fold it in on itself over and over because that is very wet indeed. Probably gonna use a fair amount of flour here, but I've put down quite a lot. In fact, the entire population of the county flour but we're just gonna work it. As you push it through, you can start to feel the wetness. See it sticking to me? It's still very wet, so we've really got to force this flour through. All right, I've been kneading this now for about 10 minutes and it is nice and smooth and you can feel the warmth in it and it's not as sticky as it was before. Try not to over dry it and move on to a clean bowl. Yep, a clean bowl, which is uh, right by my wedding ring. I'm just gonna add a teeny oil spill I'm gonna place the dough in, and then we wrap Master 3000. AKA cling film to those of you that are new to the channel. Oh. Now this, we need to leave to double in size for at least, at least an hour on your worktop. I'm just gonna stick this out of the way right down there. In about an hour's time, it should be like boom, if you have the time. And last night, I did have the time, not because I've gotta build a wall this afternoon. I've got to build a wall this afternoon for the new kitchen. I had the time last night, and if you, rather than leave it out on the side, you can actually prove the dough in a fridge. I know that seems like the opposite thing, but you get a nice overnight, slow, more enhanced flavor on the dough, and it's, it's right in here. Are you ready to see it? I did those steps last night. Oh, there you go. Exactly the same quantities last night. Look how doubled in size that is. So we are ready to move to the next stage. It smelt so yeasty this morning when I came in here. It's like a bakery. Smell it, smell it. <laughs> yes. So I will add a little bit more flour to it. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm kneading a flannel. Is polenta the same as cornmeal? According to Chad. 
Shell Hound, the golden and used interchangeably. Yeah, polenta is a dish, and cornmeal is an ingredient, often the main ingredient in that dish. That'll do for me. Hailing from northern Italy, oh. polenta... When you're about to monge on your English muffin, you might sometimes see these yellow spots glistening, and that is actually cornmeal, or corn flour in some countries, because corn flour in the UK is this, this white stuff that you put into thickened sauces. Got it? But as I just googled polenta, because uh, the actual cornmeal, the one that I want that looks just like polenta, is harder to get. Uh, I could get it on Amazon, but it's quite expensive. But this is uh, this is polenta, and it will work even though you can cook with it just fine. In fact, sometimes you'll see uh, pizza companies such as Romano's and other well-known brands, uh, they'll put uh, that on there just to help create less friction when they're sliding the pizza in and out, which is why you'll sometimes see it on the crust. Cheers. We're gonna scatter some on a baking tray, because that's where it's gonna sit in a minute. But we're also gonna work some into our dough. Like two or three sprinkles worth. This is optional, I suppose. I mean, you're gonna get it on the outer edge anyway. And then we're gonna still add some more flour and then just work this through. It's still quite cold, but we're just pushing it through. Oh my gosh. It's gonna make it a bit easier to roll out though. And what I'm gonna do, hello, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm legitimately gonna get a tape measure because I want this to work really well. I'm gonna get it so it's an inch thick. So that is an inch on the tape measure. We've got some rolling to do. I think I'll just cut it into like a more of a, a nicer shape. So we've got kind of like a, a book <laughs> of dough. It is quite thick though, so that's an inch thick dough. And we're going to push in, da -da 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 -da, keep going, lift the outside off, and then we can gather that up and make more with it. And I'm going to gently lift it and place it onto the polenta there. Some more polenta on top. Oh my gosh, just a little, little trickle like that. Yes. All right, so I've got four there. This baking tray is a little lopsided. Probably should have put it in a flat one. It is making it bend a little bit, but hey ho, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna just put a damp tea towel on top and we leave it for another 30 minutes. All right, so it's been half an hour. <laughs> a little bit misshaped actually. I quite like that, rustic. That's what we're going for, rustic folks. We're now gonna get our hob, we're gonna get a nice steady medium flame and we're gonna brown them both sides in a dry pan. <laughs> wow. There's not much more to report other than taking my time with it. I wanted to cook through as slowly as possible. Well, they have enlarged massively. Oh wow, oh wow, look at that. I just turned it over. That's probably been about four minutes on that one side. Oh my gosh. This is very exciting. These are also enormous. <laughs> <laughs> These are so big, they've risen massively. I mean, that's a good thing, right? I, I like that, but the only problem is that potentially the middle is gonna be all gooey and not cooked through. So these two are bake in the oven. Uh, the other ones, I've already started to reshape one. You can see the height difference. I've lowered it by a half, so hopefully that'll help. Yep, so these are literally half the height. Much better hopes for these. Not that I'm gonna complain about a gigantic English muffin. Oh no, but I want them to be at least normal. <laughs> yeah, I just opened one of the larger ones and it's sort of cooked down to halfway in. Definitely gonna bake through. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna bake even these smaller ones through just to be sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite a height difference. I am your father. Yeah, I've just covered them in foil and just baking them through for 10 minutes because I just, I don't know. Some recipes I saw did say to bake it through anyway. I just don't want a medium rare muffin. Just to show you, while Sass baking away, I remembered we had some more dough that we made earlier and it's working much, much better. I'm making another batch and I don't know if this is some of the flour or yeast experts out there. The one that I've done at room temperature just seems to be holding a much better shape. Hmm. I mean, this is the first one that I put on. Check out that. That, that actually feels all the way cooked through like I don't need the oven. I actually trust this. It's worked so much better. I don't know. Oh, that's actually where I dropped it. I didn't get to film that, sadly, but it fell down there and scorched on the hob ring. It was very exciting. And I've left these in there for nearly 25 minutes, turned the temperature right down for the last five. So hopefully, I've not, these might look like cakes. They might look like cakes. <laughs> They're definitely baked through though, I can feel it. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened, but let's just compare this, which doesn't need to be oven baked with, <laughs> with that. It's like a cauldron. Okay, just finished uh, cutting these in half. And as you can see, the ones that I didn't put in the fridge, they are nice, basically as you'd get them in the packet there. So it's all nice and cooked through, but you would still toast 
those sides. So, English muffins. I knew putting them on a tray was a bad idea. <laughs> But there we go, folks. That is how I make homemade English muffins from one English muffin to another. Uh, I'm gonna actually add some more notes to it on some more research that I'm gonna do into it. Whether the fridge thing, I don't know. But they actually turned out stonking just leaving them on the worktop. These ones are... Uh... <laughs> I cook. That's actually really nice, actually. If you do try this recipe, though, don't forget to send me a photo on your social media of choice. Subscribe for regular videos, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Oh, hang on a sec. You didn't think I wasn't going to show you how to make one of these, did you? Not a pug, huh? Yes, folks, to make your own homemade sausage and egg McMuffin, first we're going to make the pork patties. Grab some pork mince and you're going to chuck in a combination of sage, onion powder, thyme and salt and really work it through with clean hands in that bowl until it's fully scattered around there. Don't just do a little bit, otherwise it'll just have a blob there. Really work that seasoning in there. All you're gonna do then is roll it out super nice and thin. So you get a real good sheet of pork mince. Get an actual larger size cookie cutter than you would for your muffins and egg because that actually does shrink as it cooks. So cut it away and then wrap it in baking parchment and keep it in the fridge to chill and help firm it up for at least 30 minutes. Cooking your egg is nice and simple, you just use the same size cookie cutter as the muffins, lightly grease it, put it in a pan with cracking your egg in there, add a few drops of water with a lid on and cook it for two to three minutes for a nice runny egg. The sausage patties, put them into a frying pan with some oil, cook away until they're nice and browned on one side. As I say, it will shrink and this is optional. I flip them over and then stuck some cheese on top with the lid on again to cook the other side and melt it through. Then I realized sausage and egg McMuffins don't actually do that and it's more hamburger-esque. So instead, what you can do is toast your muffins uh, in a toaster once halving them, add a small piece of cheese on top and you can either warm the whole thing through in the oven at a later date or just bung that in the microwave just to get it clean into the base, then place on your cooked sausage. This is the sausage without the cheese. I ate that other piece, not gonna lie. Then stick on your cooked egg and then your toasted lid and you are left with an epic homemade sausage and egg McMuffin. Look at that. I'm loving the gooey sort of, oh, just the gooeyness of it, but the, look, the egg, look, look, look at that. Oh my gosh. It's time. It's time. That's pretty. That's pretty darn phenomenal. Oh my gosh, you must make that. Wow. I really wanted to put my cheesy patty in that I made, but completely up to you. Double it up, add bacon. The muffins are brilliant. That tastes so fresh and yeasty and mmm. Try it. Now, uh, I gotta go build a wall out there. In fact, next week you might see one there. How cool is that? If it's not there, you know that I just ate that and fell asleep.